Now, this is not scaremongering. This is a desperate plea for a change in policy so that we can do everything we can to try to save the reef as much as possible, given that we know how much global warming has already been locked into the system. Some of the scientists have lost hope and they don't think that it's possible to save the reef. I refuse to accept that. I still think that we must do everything we can and that we must work together in this chamber to change those policies that are seriously threatening the reef and that we must do everything we can to save what's left of it and whatever is savable. So I will continue to try to raise awareness of the peril that the reef is in with the intention of getting a change in policy from the big parties, who are sadly beholden to the donations that they get from the fossil fuel sector, whether that's the coal mining companies, whether that's the coal seam gas companies, who simply want to get more and more of their product out through the reef, which, when burnt, worsens climate change and makes it harder for the reef to thrive. So I want to take issue with the recent visit that the One Nation senators um, uh, undertook, I understand, at the end of last week. They went to an area that was in the south of the reef, off Great Keppel Island, assuming the reporting was correct. Um, and they say that because bleaching happened there 10 years ago and it came back, therefore the whole reef is fine. Well, if, that, if only that were the case, if only you could say, stand in the streets of Brisbane and say Sydney doesn't have a traffic problem because, look, there's no cars here in Brisbane. It's that kind of misguided logic that is not only looking in the wrong place, but is mixing up and confusing the difference between bleaching and when it gets so bad that they actually die. So unfortunately, 22 per cent of the reef has gotten that bad it has died. That is an incontrovertible fact. It is not a UN hoax. It is not some bizarre Greens conspiracy. It is actually what the science has found. Uh, but we have the ability to change direction, and I would urge the government, rather than um, simply jumping on the climate change is a hoax bandwagon, which sadly many of their backbench um, want to do, I would urge the government to stop sacking those scientists and cutting funding to those bodies and actually listen to the advice and collectively all put our shoulder to the wheel, because this is an organism that is ancient. It is the largest living thing that can be seen from space. It's bigger than all of us in both the literal and the metaphorical sense, and we can do so much better by it and by the 70,000 people who rely on it for their job. If we're talking about a changing economy um, and you know, bailing out companies that go bust, well, that's 70,000 people there. I don't see any outrage from the Labor opposition or the government about the fact that those jobs are under threat. They're simply propping up the uh, profits of those multinational coal and gas corporations who then make very generous donations to the government. So I want to finish by saying I welcome the attention on the reef. It's certainly something that I've continued to raise and many folk in my party have continued to raise for many years now. Um, we've done multiple Senate inquiries. Um, we have some very good work done by the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, despite the funding cuts that this government has brought down upon them. We have some excellent work being done by our coral reef scientists, and they are speaking with one voice, begging for us to listen and begging for this government and the opposition to change policies so that we can save what's left of the reef. And as a Queenslander who grew up visiting the reef, it affected me deeply, and I will fight like hell to protect this beautiful place and all of the 70,000 people whose jobs rely upon it remaining healthy. I think that should be a job for all of us in this chamber, um, rather than simply dismissing it as some cooked up, bizarre um, frolic. I think that's a real abrogation of our duty as senators to get across the facts, to listen to the people, to listen to the scientists, to then take good decisions where we can actually make a difference for the future of not just those people's jobs, but the future of this amazing organism.